And when we were married in the United States in 2008, we also wanted to celebrate with our friends and family in Singapore. So shortly after that time, we traveled to Singapore for our Asian wedding ceremony. Now you must know that I am from a small family. I am an only child. No brothers or sisters. But when I got to Singapore, I found out that my wife was from a very large family. She, her father has ten brothers and sisters, and her mother has seven brothers and sisters. They all have children and grandchildren. And at our wedding, it is very important that I learn all the names of this whole extended family. And when the part of the tradition in Singapore is that we serve all of our elders' tea. And when they drink the tea, it is part of how they welcome us into their family. And what I realized at that time was in the U.S. I may be an individual. But in Asia, I'm part of a much bigger family. And this is a picture of what it is like for all of us who have come to know Jesus Christ as our Lord. We are part of a much bigger family. As the Wesleyan Church, you are part of a family that has worked in 95 countries around the world. When you wish to come to the world, you are part of a family in India. And as a believer in Jesus Christ, you are a member of a church that has 2 billion people all over the world. You are part of something great. And you know what? We need each other. We need you. We need you to stand with us and pray with us so that we may see all the world come to know Jesus Christ. And we will do the same with you. We will stand with you and pray with you to reach the people in your area. So the As we are dedicating this church building today, I am reminded of the time in the Old Testament when King Solomon dedicated the temple. He had prayed and all the people had made sacrifices. They had prayed that God would fill this place. We are going to read in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, how God responded to that prayer. Chronicles 
had a surprise for his disciples. He knew something they did not know. And if he went away, if he went back up to heaven, he would send down the Holy Spirit to fill them. And just as God's glory filled the temple in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit wants to fill us. And what does the Holy Spirit do? Why is He such a great gift? Why is the Holy Spirit such a great gift to us? Three reasons. He is our best friend. Jesus promised he would not leave us as orphans. He would come to us. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Jesus. And he comes to live inside of us to bring us comfort and peace. He comes to be our close friend. When the Holy Spirit lives inside of us, we never have to be alone again. The second reason the Holy Spirit is such a great gift is that He makes us new. We read in the Bible that the Holy Spirit was involved in Genesis 1 in the creation of the world. The word spirit can also be translated wind or breath. It's the breath of God. And in Genesis 1, we are told that the breath of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. It was the Holy Spirit that was so involved in the creation of the world. And later in the Old Testament, we read in the book of the prophet Ezekiel, a very interesting story. Ezekiel lived in a time when Israel was in very bad shape. They were suffering physically and they were also far from God spiritually. And Ezekiel describes a vision that he had where he saw dry bones filling a whole valley. And God asked him, can these bones live again? He was saying, can these people be renewed and restored? And Ezekiel prophesied to the breath to go back into these bones. 
Let's go break them down. It's a picture of the Holy Spirit. In Ezekiel's vision, he saw these bones take on flesh and stand to their feet. And they became a mighty army. And that's the power that the Holy Spirit has in our lives. He makes us new. All the places in our lives that are still dead to sin, the Holy Spirit can make new. And then in the New Testament of the Bible, we read that the Holy Spirit produces fruit in our lives when He comes into our lives. He makes us righteous. He makes us holy. The Bible tells us that our righteousness is not because we grit our teeth and we try really, really hard. Our righteousness is by faith in Jesus. And as we know Jesus, he gives us his righteousness. There was a time in my life when I did not understand this. In 1994, I was attending secondary school in the U.S. And I knew that God was calling me to a higher standard. Um,